once upon a time in the dying land of Equestria. Good night, fillies and gentle colts. This is Lonesome Pony speaking, and you are tuned to Radio 52. All the news you need to hear about the Big 52 and nothing else. Well, almost nothing. In fact, it seems that now the biggest radio station in Equestria is broadcasting all throughout the wasteland. Some saint went down to Philadelphia on behalf of DJ Pony and bucked the transmitter till it worked again. So hooray for those guys at Ten Pony Tower. They took over the world. A bolsterous music played for several seconds. <clears throat> Back to work. News, news, news. What do we have? All right. Hey, my little ponies, are you afraid of ghosts? You should. You do remember the story of Carnival. Well, don't worry if you don't. Good ol' LP is gonna give you the quick recap for those that didn't do their homework. Far from the north end of the Big 52, there is a solitary barn. The Red Shrouders call it the Carnival. It's a cursed relic from a long lost age. But unlike a lot of its siblings, it never went to sleep. Once a year, since my grandpa could remember, a ghost leaves the building and lurks the hills nearby, inviting every pony to its party and looking for company. When the next morning comes, a foal's gone. No matter what, no pony ever returned. Approaching the carnival was suicide thanks to the state-of-the-art laser defense turrets in place. But if you did successfully get close enough without being shot, you could hear some music come from the cursed barn. All day and all night long. Just like a permanent party of horrors. Well, my little ponies, it seems that some pony just yelled, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Rust inside the barn and the party full swing and blew the roof off the whole place. Quite literally. No more full napping ghosts for the Red Shrouders. I tried to gather some information about this benefactor, but what I got was a bit messy. Apparently, it's some sort of ghost itself. A foal wearing a yellow red suit and raising from the dead in a pink cloud. Well, yellow ghost, nice work. One problem solved, 999 to go. Oh, and did I mention the fact that this year's victim made it safely back home? Celestia bless our souls. And now, back to the good old Pony Marcus. Day 4. Time, approximately 12.30 a.m. Location, Salt Cube Flats, Big 52, North Branch. Puppy trotted along Route 52, heading south. The big city had grown from a small silhouette on the horizon to a large, sprawling mass just a few kilometers in front of her. The foal trotted all day long, and out of the light was fading to darkness, the filly's eyes turned bright pink, shining in the night while she walked down the road. Without the daylight, it was possible to see the green glow around the dome of the Salt Cube City. While the bigger skyscrapers of downtown were lit with some sparse fires, the largest part of the city simply faded into darkness, of an ever-clouded night sky. Around midnight, the filly in yellow spotted a small caravan coming in her direction from the south. There were half a dozen ponies, and they had some strange two-headed cows with them. Puppy sat down in surprise and waited for them to draw near. Obviously, the caravan guard spotted the foal quite soon, mostly because she was the light source, sitting by herself in the middle of the road. Needless to say, the guards were already on edge. A large buck wearing a combat saddle mumbled to another. What do you think? Could be that ghost from the news. The leader of the guards, an earth pony man with a big revolver, shrugged. Raising a hoof, she made the caravan stop. Don't know, but I'm not taking any chances. Let's move. Two on the sides, two here. I'm trying diplomatic approach. Cover me or forget your pay. Two of the guards detached from the caravan and left the route. Circling puppy smiles, one on each side. In the meantime, the leader ran ahead while the caravan and the remaining two guards kept their distance. The sight of the filly was quite an eerie one. A small yellow silhouette and a glowing pink light coming from the ghastly helmet that was already perfectly valid argument for in favor of opening fire. The chief of the guards approached the creature with caution, hoping that the two guards were fast enough for the trigger in case of complications. 
Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. The foal raised a hoof, waving it to the guard leader. Well, at least it didn't seem hostile. In the Wasteland Survival Guide, there was a sentence that dwarfs all others when it comes to the sheer number of times it's iterated. Better safe than sorry. Nothing seemed hostile. It doesn't mean it wasn't safe. Okay. Now, don't move and tell me why you are here and why I shouldn't transform you into fertilizer. Puppy giggled. Fancy words always made her giggle. <laughs> Pretty Pony's funny. I'm not a Forty Lisa. I'm Puppy Smiles. What's your name? The guard leader hesitated for a moment. Was this fool simply retarded, or was it all some part of a well-schemed trap? The whole situation just smelled wrong. Yeah. I'm Solid Slug. Are you alone? Without waiting for an answer, the guard gestured to the two on the sides to check their surroundings. Nopey Mopey. I'm with Mr. Voice. He's super smart and super stupid. Or, it depends. But, he sure knows where my mom is. And... Where is this Mr. Voice now? Inside the spacesuit. See all the lights and the pretty dots? He makes them appear. Okay, 9 out of 10, she was just retarded. Solid Slug took a better look at the helmet of the suit, trying to ignore Puppy's bright shining eyes. There was an active HUD, quite similar to the one used in some of the models of Battle Saddles. At first sight, the harness seemed a little expensive piece of equipment. Solid wondered how a foal could ever find something like that. But the pink light somehow gave her a feeling that there was something more. Long story short, Solid Slug had been in the business a whole lot longer than most of the caravan guards, and had picked up more than a thing or two about the wasteland in all of its time. This allowed her to formulate her next question. Say, are you from Canterlot by chance? Yes. My house is, uh, was under the mountain of Cloverleaf Terrace. But the other day it went down, so now I'm looking for my mom. She wasn't at the old barn, but Mr. Voice says there's another place that in the big town over there. So that's where I'm going now. Puppy pointed a hoof towards somewhere southward. Solid Slug nodded a couple of times while listening, raising a hoof and gesturing to the caravan. After some preparations, the cart started moving again. Well, you chat a lot, don't ya? Lonesome Pony was speaking about your exploits at Carnival. My what? You mean the old barn? I didn't explode there. It was the barn that exploded, silly filly. Puppy Smiles giggled. That pink bot was totally baked bad. At first it seemed really creepy, but I'm a brave pony. Solid Slug scratched her head, trying without a veil to follow Puppy's chattering. Ugh. Yeah, that's great. I'd stay here and chat for ages, but we have to keep moving. If you're going to Salt Cube City, the ghoul community is at the Dome. I think they call it the Glow. Don't wander too much in downtown. They don't like your kin. Oh, right. And good luck, little ghost. When the caravan arrived, the other ponies from the group launched curious looks at Puppy, but Solid Slug whispered something to a purple unicorn with a red mane, and they simply kept moving. The filly in yellow stared with amazement at the brahmin and waved a hoof at the pretty ponies as they disappeared in the night. Once she was on her own again, the foal trotted away towards the south, along the route. Day 4. Time approximately 11.30 a.m. Location. Downtown. Salt Cube City. The gate was a simple barricade built with sandbags and salvaged metal plates. On the wooden platform, a pony with metal barding operated a gatling gun while two other guards checked any pony that wanted to get into Salt Cube City. One last unicorn, wearing an officer uniform, sat inside a small metal structure, writing things on a register. It was almost noon, but the traffic from the north end of downtown was as dead as the wasteland. This time, Puppy Smiles was ready. She had that metal thing with the painted apple to show to the guards. One of the armored ponies approached her while the others kept their weapons ready. Let's see... You have a valid pass. Now, what's your name and your business here? I'm Puppy Smiles. What's your name, Mr. Pretty Pony? The guard raised the visor of his helmet, giving Puppy an annoyed look. Corporal Farsight. Now, what's your business in Salt Cube City, kid? Oh, I know this one. I'm looking for my mom. She's somewhere in that direction? Puppy pointed her hoof towards a cluster of ruined buildings on the guard's side. 
Very well, I guess that's enough. Just another question. Why are you wearing a full environmental suit? Oh, this one? I'm stuck inside of it. But that's okay, because Mr. Voice lives inside the space suit, too. And he's helped me with my mission. The Philly lowered her voice, whispering to Farsight. He's not very good with that, but don't tell him. He's quite grumpy. The guard lowered his visor again and shrugged. As long as you're not going to blow up a mega spell in downtown, you can dress how you like. Welcome to Salt Cube City, kid. The Philly and Yellow tried to be on the roadblock, but Farsight called her back one last time. Oh, right. Don't go anywhere near the dome. There are feral ghouls in that area, and it's heavily irradiated. Okie dokie loki. Bye bye, Mr. Guard Farsight. Puppy trotted merrily towards the big skyscrapers at the bottom of the boulevard, even though the pink arrow pointed in a different direction. Downtown was your typical trade hub along the Big 52. There were guards that kept ponies from killing each other, and a couple of dozen tents with signs of different trading companies operating the area, like the water herders or the gun gallopers. There were even freelance traders and some trade posts with the nearest tribes. The open market was placed in the streets. The real downtown were the four skyscrapers that stood in the middle of the settlement. Sol Cube City had been the target of a single mega spell during the war, and the missile vector that should have delivered it malfunctioned. The warhead hit the Salt Cube dome in the city periphery, piercing the roof and exploding at ground level. The massive structure of the dome shielded the surrounding area from the worst effects of the hit, but not from the fallout. During the successive two centuries, most weathered buildings surrendered one by one to the ravages of time, but the four biggest and least damaged skyscrapers survived, and still stood in the middle of the city. The four towers were the symbol of power of Salt Cube City. Two of them were each the main hub of trading companies, while the third was the helica headquarters of the Hired Hooves, a powerful mercenary group. The last building was the smallest one, and housed the White Apples, the original tribe that inhabited the city. They were formerly the real proprietors of the whole town, and got a share of all the commerce going on in the place. The White Apples were also the main breeding ground for the hired hooves, mostly consisting of the families of the ponies that had worked for the mercenary group. Poppy stood in front of a small tent marked with a reddish splash, the symbol of the Red Trotters. The shop sported a vast assortment of melee weapons and light armors on the shelf. A mare with an old cowboy hat was sitting on an ammunition box just in the middle of the exhi exhibition. Hey, nice dress, little one. Say, you from the north? The mare asked Puppy Smiles with a smile, and lifted her hat with a hoof, revealing a horn on her forehead. The cutie mark on her flank depicted a basketball. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. The fool waved a hoof and trot towards the mare. I'm from there. Puppy pointed a hoof out the street outside the tent. I'm Playmaker. I think that Lonesome Pony mentioned something about you last night. Um, you mean that chatty pony on the music channel? Puppy scratched her helmet with a thoughtful expression. Last time he was speaking of the importance of drinking pure water? No, no. I mean the news about the Yellow Ghost. Ah, uh, maybe there is more than a pony wearing a rad suit around. Anyhow, what do you need? Puppy Smiles frowned. Why is everyone calling me a ghost? Playmaker smiled. So it is you after all. I knew it. The unicorn tapped her chin for a moment. Say, aren't you a bit too young to destroy a cursed barn? Actually, aren't you a bit too young to go around on your own? Are you a crusader? Nopey mopey. I'm looking for my mom, and I'm not alone. I have Mr. Voice with me. Your mom? Maybe I can help you. A lot of ponies visit downtown every day. What's your mom's name? What's her cutie mark? Puppy smiled widely. Oh, her name is Rainy Days. She's purple and has an orange mane, and her cutie mark is a cloud with raindrops. Have you seen her? Mr. Voice says that she's somewhere in this place. That way. Puppy pointed a hoof again in the direction of some damaged buildings. Playmaker stood on her... Uh, up. I'm sorry, kid. I can't remember a pony with a palette like that or a cutie mark. And the name doesn't ring a bell. The merchant unicorn looked in the direction of the foals pointing and frowned. That way, you say? That can't be good. That's the radioactive area. The only standing building in that direction is the dome. And trust me, you don't want to go anywhere near the dome. The dome? What's that? 
It's a place filled with feral ghouls and other horrors. It's radioactive, but maybe that's not a problem since you're wearing a rad suit. The real problem are the inhabitants. A small community of fanatical religious ghouls live there, and they're on the brink of madness. Some of them, of their siblings, actually went mad and attacked the caravans heading there. Quite a situation now that the White Apples are looking for a way to get rid of those hotheads. They blast any ghoul that shows his face inside. But they can't go in and finish the job. The whole place is a death trap, if you're not immune to radiation, so they've reached a stalemate. Puppy Smiles frowned. What's a ghoul? You... Are you kidding me? You don't know what a ghoul is? Playmarker stared at the blank expression of the foal inside. No, you're not kidding. She shook her head. A ghoul is a pony that was poisoned by radiation a long time ago, when the mega spells hit. Instead of dying, they were transformed into... I'm not sure what they are. Living dead? Maybe some sort of zombie? Anyhow, most of them went crazy because of the mutation and became feral ghouls. Aggressive creatures that attack and try to eat any pony that they see. Others retained their sanity and became immortal, but were disfigured by the mutations. Their manes fell out, their hides burned away, and their flesh began to blister and rot. Every ghoul looks like a decomposing corpse, but somehow they remain alive. The problem is that sooner or later every ghoul begins to go boing in the head and changes their diet for a meteor one. Puppy frowned. The unicorn could see fear and realization in her eyes. Miss Playmaker? Um, if my mom is really there, where Mr. Voice says, will she be okay? I... The unicorn lowered her hat, hiding her eyes from the filly. I don't know, little ghost, but the dome is a dangerous place. I hope you're not going to go there after what I told you. Puppy stood on her hooves with renewed determination in her eyes. I have to go. My mom could be there. She could be in danger. Playmaker realized that she'd never be able to talk her out of the suicide mission. You're not family. I can't tell you what to do and not to do. But please listen to my advice. Go to that tower. The one with the big white apple on the sign. Tell the pony at the entrance that you want to enroll for a scout mission into the dome. They'll give you some equipment and maybe a weapon. You have a rad suit, so they'll desperately accept that. Ah, uh, I think you might even stand a chance. Puppy smiled. Okie dokie, Loki. Hang on, Mom. I'm coming to rescue you. The foal galloped out of the tent and eagerly rushed towards the White Apple Tower. Day 4. Time approximately 2 p.m. Location Salt Cube Dome, Salt Cube City. Warning Mild radiation detected. Threat level negligible. The dome was a humongous, epilepic structure that had once served as an expo center, where a large number of events could be hosted at the same time. A gigantic, globular roof had once sat over the building, but now was completely destroyed, leaving only the external walls still adorned with columns and arches that made the structure vaguely resemble an oversized coliseum. The boulevard headed right to the main entrance of the dome, a monumental arch that led into the hall where the huge remains of a marble statue littered the floor that once made the polished stone tiles, but now was mostly a carpet of rubble. Puppy stood in front of the archway, looking at the pink arrow on her compass. Okie dokie, Mr. Voice. What are we doing now exactly? Ministry of Morale Hub reached. Primary objective attained. Yes, I know that we're here. I'm asking what's next. What are we supposed to do? Secondary objective. Investigate the ghouls and or get rid of them. Warning. Mild radiation detected. Threat level negligible. So, we find these ghouls, ask them where Mom is, and then we try to make them go away? Affirmative. That is one approach. Great. I love having a plan. Let's do it. Puppy stepped into the hall and yelled, Hey, ghoul ponies! Her voice echoed several times into the large structure, but it didn't seem to get any answer. So the filly in yellow trotted towards the huge stairs at the bottom of the entrance hall. Warning. Heavy radiation detected. Threat level negligible. Hey, I think I've seen some pony moving behind that statue. Hey you! Wait! Puppy galloped in the direction of a shadow that was hiding behind the pedestal of another broken marble monument. As the foal reached the hiding pony, 
she slowed to a trot and called out to him or her. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my... That pony. It was him. Count Horstile. He was right in front of her, even uglier than she could remember, and somehow a lot creepier. Morning. Hostile detected. Feral ghoul. Distance. Two meter. Threat level low. The creature was looking at Puppy's face, drooling a yellowish goo from its mouth. It seemed oddly uncertain about its next move. Puppy stepped back, terrified of the sight. B -b Why are you still coming after me? Leave me be! Go away! The creature growled and lowered its head. Puppy turned on herself and galloped away as fast as she could. Alas, it wasn't fast enough. The feral creature jumped on her, foaming and biting, aiming for Puppy's head. The helmet was designed to withstand some direct hits, so the first assault of the raging beast simply hurt Puppy's innocence. The sight of a toothful of rotten teeth scratching at the helmet while dripping yellow slime at less than ten centimeters from her face was a shocking experience that left the foal paralyzed in fear. Ah! At first, Puppy reached, reacted on pure instinct. The filly tried bucking the ghoul away, but it was a lot heavier than she was, and it pinned the little pony to the ground with its weight. Rock! Rock now! The little pony didn't stop screaming as she grabbed the rock of destiny with both hooves and started hitting the monster repeatedly. Stop moving! Stop moving now! A couple of minutes later, Puppy was beating the brown, slimy pulp that was once the pony's head. The scratches on her helmet and some minor bruises on the fabric were already being repaired due to the self-repairing talismans built into the suit. Slowly, the beating simmered down until it stopped completely. The ghoul was positively immobile, and Puppy needed to catch her breath. It had been a terrible ordeal, but at last the dark shadow of Count Horstile was gone. No more hiding or running away. The monster was stopped once and for all. His reign of terror extinguished. At last, Puppy felt relieved. Then she raised her eyes from the dead ghoul, and finally noticed that the three other ghouls were looking at her with empty eyes and drooling mouths. Warning. Hostiles detected. On a count of three. Nearest target is twelve meters. Uh, hey, Mr. Voice. What is a misunder... uh... static? Misunderstanding. The act of giving wrong meaning to a sentence. Creating confusion. The more you know. Puppy nodded and while well, the three ghouls were looking in her direction from the end of the hall. Good. What exactly is a horse tile count? Hostile count. Number of enemies or ill-intentioned creatures in sensor range. Actual hostile count, three. Feral ghouls. Threat level, moderate. Puppy sighed, threw the rock of destiny at the ghouls and charged. The ghouls did the same thing from the other end of the hall. Day 3. Time. Approximately 2.30 p.m. Location. Salt Cube Dome. Salt Cube City. Warning. Several breaches in the contamination suit. Warning. Little Horn Agent detected. Warning. Compass malfunctioning. Warning. Inventory management spell temporarily offline. Warning. Energy crystal cells damaged. Emergency cells on 29.06%. Warning. Deadly radiation levels detected. Threat level. Negligible. Subject deceased. Condition stable. All clear. Puppy stood in the middle of a scene of mayhem, decorated with goo and rotten flesh. The bodies of three ghouls lay scattered on the ground with their heads missing. The whole fight had taken a while and been very messy with the ghouls regenerating because of the radiation in the nearby area, and Puppy regenerating because of the pink agent and her red suit's enchantments. In the end, the foal's dedication at aiming only for their heads won against the brainless biting and bucking of the ghoul trio. But in the process, she had taken a beating, like a bucking bag. Her flanks were half-eaten, and a thin pink cloud invaded the area. Hey, Mr. Voice? Are you sure that Mom is in this place? Affirmative. Actual position. Ministry of Morale Structure. ID 00201. Salt Cube Dome. Okie. Doki Loki. Puppy stopped listening at affirmative and bit the dust falling on the ground, exhausted from the fight. 
Because the only thing I want to do now is crying. A couple of figures appeared from another entrance of the hall. They seemed to whisper something to each other, or for one of them took a hunting rifle and the others moved cautiously towards the filly in yellow. Puppy reached out with her hoof for the Rock of Destiny in front of her and grabbed it. But her eyes were so tired, she just wanted to lie down a little more. Please, go away. Please, stop being mean. I'll behave. The nearest pony was not close enough to let Puppy take a good look at it. It was another ghoul, but somehow different from the others. This one was wearing a uniform similar to the one the mare that gave her the suit. Moreover, it didn't drool. It had some intelligence in his eyes, and at last, but not least, it spoke. Hey there, little one. Are you okay? This place is deadly dangerous. The pony's voice was like chalk screeching on a blackboard, but somehow Puppy felt like it was a mare's voice. Hey! Soft air! We have to take this foal out from the radioactive zone before she dies. Do we have some Radex or any Radaway? I don't think so. Stay out of the pink cloud, it seems awfully familiar. I'm almost sure it's dangerous. The scouting pony abruptly stopped before getting too close to Puppy and tilted her head. Oh, so it's not just my bad eye? The ghoul trotted around the pink cloud that was quickly dissipating, as if the suit were drawing it back inside of itself in the process of self-repairing. Contamination restored. Warning. Critical level of radiation detected. Threat level negligible. Puppy slowly raised her hooves, while the ghoul mare drew closer, and the other kept his weapon ready. The field had to try something diplomatic. Uh, hi. I hope that those ugly ponies weren't your friends. The word you're looking for is ghouls, little one. And yes, there was a time when they were our friends, but I guess that's right now that you did them a favor. So no bad blood. The ghoul mare stopped in front of Puppy Smiles and took a look inside the helmet. The face of the filly was annoyingly well conserved, not showing scars or signs of deterioration. But the pink flames in her eyes burned bright, with the radiation of the place spoke volumes about her nature. You are quite the strange ghoul. I am Peach Blossom. What is your name? Um, oh, yeah. I'm Puppy Smiles. I'm looking for my mom. She's supposed to be somewhere in this place, but all I found were these ugly ponies. Peach waved a hoof, calling for her companion. Soft air, stop being paranoid and come here. Then she went back, speaking to the foal in yellow. Could you please stop calling us ugly and just say ghouls? Anyhow, if your mother is here, then she has to be a ghoul too. Otherwise, she is going to be super slim. What's your mother's name? I know this one. Her name is Rainy Days, and she's super cool. Have you seen her? The buck coming near overhead overheard the conversation. Rainy days, rainy days. That name sounds familiar. If you give me a second or two to think about it, I might remember something. Puppy looked amazed at soft air. Really? Please, 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 where is she? Hey, wait. I told you I can't remember very well. My memory's not as good as it used to be. Anyhow, if you don't want to meet other ferals, we should move. Let's go to the glow. Peach Blossom nodded. Yes, let's go back. After all, we found what we were looking for. Anyhow, Puppy, where are you from? Canterlot. Puppy smiled with pride. Canterlot was the best city ever. Why not be proud of it? Both ghouls frowned. Peach looked away while Soft Air sighed. Oh, so you're one of those, Peach muttered to herself. War sucks. Day 4. Time, approximately 3 p.m. Location, The Glow. Salt Cube City. The Glow was mostly a small circle of tents pitched in the central hall of the dome. The roof was missing, and a large metallic debris littered the ground. The tents were all sporting a three-pink butterfly symbol on a yellow background. They were large and sturdy, made of tough material that was built to last and indeed had survived for more than two centuries. 
Quite obviously, the glow wasn't called as such because the tents nor the ghouls were glowing. It was the 12 meter tall salt cube glowing in the bluish green light that made the glow deserving of its name. Warning Radiation level off the scale. Sensor emergency shutdown activated in order to prevent irreparable damage. Threat level negligible. The hut of the helmet disappeared. Puppy frowned for a single moment, then shrugged. Maybe even Mr. Voice needed a little sleep sometimes. The cube was drawing all of Puppy's attention. It was shiny and glassy and super nice. The fool wondered if she could have some little shiny cubes to keep in her bedroom. This could get rid of the bad, scary monster that lived under her bed. For a moment, the fool missed her home and felt like crying. But she was a filly on a mission, and she didn't have time for those things. So she asked, What's that pretty shiny cube? I can have shiny cube too? Please? Puppy, please? Soft Air chuckled. I don't think so, puppy. But I could have something nice if you be a good pony. Deal? Puppy started jumping all around. A present? For me? Gimme, gimme, gimme! Not now. I told you to behave, right? First of all, we're going to have a little chat with Sandbox. And then we'll try to find something out about Miss Rainy Days. Puppy stopped jumping and began to trot alongside Soft Air and Peach Blossom. You know, even if you're pretty ugly, you are funny and nice ponies. Peach deadpanned. Well, thank you, Miss Monster. Anyhow, there he is, Sandbox, the leader of the camp. Another ghoul was looking at a block of paper, reading it and scratching his head, seemingly in confusion. Even if he seems elsewhere at times, he's smarter than the average scientist. Hey, boss, we have a survivor. The leader of the ghouls was wearing an old lab coat and a pair of glasses. He seemed quite alarmed from the look he was giving the papers in front of him. The ghoul replied without even looking at Puppy. Yes, great. Give him the usual speech and warn him against downtown. Excuse me, but I'm trying to avoid a cascade. Puppy Smiles giggled and trot up to him, looking up at his face. <laughs> Ugly Pony says fancy words. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles, but you can call me Puppy. Have you seen my mom? Peach tried to stop the foal, but it was already too late. The ghoul guardian opened her mouth to say something, but was interrupted by the reaction of her leader. Sandbox adjusted his glasses and studied Puppy Smiles for some seconds. Luna, buck me if I thought I'd see another functioning Mach 6. It was a hay of a failure, wasn't it? Both Peach and Air tilted their heads, staring in puzzlement at Sandbox as he continued. They were designed to keep foals safe from the worst effects of the fallout, loaded with all the best medical talismans and up-to-date logical spells that in some cases were even more advanced than the ones used by Stable Tech in its pip box. The ghoul shook his head. His expression turned sad. What we didn't expect was that the reaction of all this technology and magic in case of a pink agent attack the suit had enough medical supplies and healing power in the talismans to mitigate the first effects of the gas, creating a perfect conditions for a... merging process. The scientist turned towards the other two ghouls. Have you ever heard of the ghost herd? Both ponies shook their head. Sandbox put a hoof around Puppy's neck, making her stand next to him. It was about a month past the day the goddesses fell. A small herd of little ponies wearing yellow-red suits like this one left Canterlot. Most of them lost their minds because of the mutation. Others had simply no clue what was going on. They were ghosts indeed, obsessed with the loss of their parents and clueless about what had happened. They wandered together mostly because every pony else in those days was dead. The herd came here, heading south. They met some survivors on their path, but the crazed ones simply slaughtered any living thing that they met. The others... Well, they were afraid of being alone and followed the herd. Peach stepped back. She doesn't seem that dangerous to me. Sandbox chuckled and kept narrating his tale. They are mostly immortal like us ghouls, but they rise from their own dust unless you tear their bodies apart, like cantalot ghouls. Even worse, 
The Mark VI has very advanced repairing spells, and lets them recover even from some amputations. They are quite the little yellow devils. Softer hair tapped his chin. But if they were so invincible, then where are they now? I have no idea. Most of them were taken down at last. A decapitation combined with the destruction of the spell matrix and a backup system should do the trick. But it's not that easy if you don't know what you're doing. Anyhow, at some point they left, disappearing, left, and never seen or heard from again. The whole thing lasted a couple of weeks at most. You had to be there to remember them, but it was quite disheartening. All those fools left alone in a cursed and dying world. Poor things. The elder ghoul patted Puppy on the helmet. The foal listened to the whole story trying to follow it, but she seemed a bit confused. I don't like this story. It makes me sad. Sandbox simply sighed and put a hoof around Puppy's neck. Don't worry, little one. Just an old ghost story. Don't let the old mare tales stop your enthusiasm. I think I have a Pinkie Pie plushie somewhere. Let's do this. Now just tell me why you're here and I'll give it to you, yes? A large grin appeared on Puppy's face. The story of the ghost heard almost forgotten in favor of the way more interesting story and toy. Sure. I'm looking for my mom. Her name is Rainy Days, and she's the best pony ever. Puppy seemed to remember something else. Oh, right. And I'm here to tell the ghouls to go away and never come back. Have you seen any ghouls around, Mr. Ugly Boss Pony? Peach Blossom face hoofed. Footnote. Level up, two. New perk added. Little Leaguer. You gain plus 5% in throwing, melee, and unarmed combat.